I will call to order a uh, regular meeting of the Wilmington <coughs> Board of Selectmen, February 19th, 2019. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That one especially. That one just goes. Okay, so the next item is approval of minutes. In your packet you should see two, um, two sets of minutes. February 4, oh sorry, I apologize, three, three sets. Um, two from the 4th, a regular meeting, a special meeting, and then a special meeting on the 11th. Make a motion that we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of February 4th, 2019 as <coughs> submitted. Second. Motion by John, seconded by Liza. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Right. So, I will move to approve the special meeting minutes from February 4. All second. Motion by myself, seconded by John. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Motion carries. One more. Uh, I move to approve the February 11th special meeting minutes. Second. Okay. Motion by myself, second by Liza. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I make a motion to add item D to new business. Uh, approving a tax refund. I think uh, so. Robin put one in here that seemed to have gotten lost in the shuffle. It was signed by the uh, revenue collector on February 6th. I'll um, All those in favor? Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we've got item uh, Is there anyone present to speak? Yes, sir. Just identify yourself on the record. Todd is at 41 Cosgrove Road. Um, the purpose of me speaking is to ask the board and appeal to the board for consistency across the board with everything, actually. I've been here in the past uh, with issues uh, along with fellow neighbors and other people across the town. And we indulged in, for the past few meetings, of the gentleman up the street with the, the pipeline situation converted to his water where I'm not quite sure how that stands and I would ask for clarification on that if you could after what I have to say. But I read the minutes from uh, last meeting and I apologize for not being here but as I said earlier before the meeting things just keep breaking in the weather. <laughs> and uh, so I've missed a few but it's you're talking about deferring the taxes for federal employees and John it's I've got in here we quoted everyone's due to pay taxes. I agree with you whether it's taxes abiding by the law or just being consistent with rules and regulations, law, whatever it may be. And I'm appealing to, to the board to keep it consistent. Gentleman up the water, up the street with the water, may he, maybe, he be, maybe he may be entitled to it, maybe he shouldn't be. But it shouldn't be at the burden of, it, of other taxpayers within the town. And nor should it be to where other people like myself and others, I have soda ash, I need I mean, low pH, I need to inject soda ash into my system. I have a high iron, I have a water softener. I love to have city water again. Okay, so when everyone else on the street. But when the first meeting, which it came to be last year, I was at that meeting. It might not have been the first, but I heard him say, you can go back in the minutes and see it, where he quoted, he's too old to pull out a hose. Well, I ain't too far behind him, okay? I get tired of pulling the hose, too. But that doesn't entitle the hardship, and I'm asking the board to be fair to everybody and be consistent. You guys do a great job. It's not easy. I've been here hammering heads against you guys. It's no fun where you're at. I appreciate what you have to do. And other than that, that's it. Great job. And just if it's consistency across the board for everybody. Thank you. Anyone else present to speak? 
Can I have can I have one I have comment in response? So thank you. Um, I think um, and I think just to clarify where we stand in that particular situation is that we voted to allow the process to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we stand, right? And there were certain specific circumstances because there is a water line right in front of that house, which was really the only consideration for us at the time. Um, if there was a water line right in front of your house, you would be able to ask us the same question. So, you know, it was, it was a challenging conversation for us to have, and we um, are moving forward, I think, the best way we we know how, awesome. given you know, given all the information that we have. So, um, well, thank you. Now, I didn't mean to step on you. And if there was a water line, I wouldn't be talking. I'd be digging it myself because yeah. I know how to connect to it. <laughs> but no, that would not be a good yeah, idea. Yeah, we will forget that you didn't think about that. Yeah. So. so, but I do appreciate your your words and your support, and, and I do thank you for sharing um, your thoughts. Thank you. Anyone else present to speak? Just here to hear. Okay. <laughs> present, present to listen. No, present to listen. Okay. So uh, we'll move on then for correspondence. You'll see a list of correspondence in your packet. I'm not sure this chair is going to do this meeting. <laughs> do you want to switch? Yeah, good for now. You may have to pick me up. <laughs> Fire department will come for a lift assist. That's it. <laughs> hey, I might be able to get up. <laughs> um, Robin, I do see the, the monthly report for January. Had come in. I didn't see that we that in the packet in the past we've read through them. Yes. Okay. I we hadn't gotten one in a while and yes. suddenly yeah, we started getting we started getting them again. Okay. Got okay. But it is available if anyone wants to see the number calls. We just in the past we've read through them but without them. Do you, you want them. once we get them you want to continue? I think so. Okay. It's kind of nice to hear. I think I appreciate it. I'm sorry, I don't know if I finished, but my comment was, is it wasn't negative against what John said, it was, it no, was no. in positive intent. And it was I just like, took it, it, oh, okay. I didn't take it either way, just. Okay, because I read back in the minutes where the gas station properties were deferred, and the federal employees are asking to be deferred, or whatever. It's just that everyone has issues up and down, and, that, and you got to prepare. The, um, the issue with the, because of the federal um, situation, we didn't have anyone in town, so we didn't feel at that point we needed yeah. to, to act on it. It's not that we wouldn't, but we hadn't. We've gone through almost the entire tax season, I'll say, up to that point, and we hadn't had one request or phone call through the revenue collector's office. Um, and so the information to come as we were ending that process, and so we were, I don't think we were opposed to it. We just didn't, it wasn't something we needed to act on. And it was only regarding that particular shutdown and because we had no one who would come forward with us. That, I think that's why we, there was a lack of action because there was no request for it whatsoever. And it was a finite amount of time that that applied to. It only applied to the shutdown at that time, not going forward. Great to hear. I just wanted to make sure yeah. what I was saying was positive intent. That's well, all. No, thank all you. Right. <laughs> okay, so, um, so starting with our next meeting, we'll get some of those numbers. Um, you'll also see that we had had the request um, to put flags on the road. Mr. Mm -hmm. Conti sent another request asking for the same thing again. Um, while I like the idea of it, um, I'm not sure that they're, you know, once we take on some of these things, we have to continue to be able to sustain them if those who donate um, cannot. And so I'll let me read it good author. That's what she just said. Oh, she knows yeah. what she's talking about, so I'll go with her. Um, <laughs> so um, but I think that's kind of what we discussed was how would it be maintained going forward. Mm -hmm. The donations ended and then what would we do? Would we stop? Program would we then end up in our budget? I think we talked about this thing before how something starts. There it is, it means I'm wanting to add something that ends up being a budgetary item that now we have to sustain. Um, so, we've got the request. So, status reports. Um, I will start with a um, couple of projects. The Cato Rock issue, we had, we had agreed to um, the increase in dollars, and if you remember correctly, from the L companies. And 
ours was secondary to ASHRAC who signed it because they're the ones who signed the contract. And they had um, not signed at the meeting the same night, the initial night. They had had more discussion um, at their next meeting. They had actually gone ahead and signed that agreement to agree to the increase. Again, it was no additional dollars to either Ashford or ourselves. They wanted to ask some more questions. Um, I think Mike had some more questions of BL. They were satisfied with the reasons why they were requesting more funding, so they did go forward and sign after they did. Um, update on crumbling foundations, the money has... Can I, can I, yes, yes. I, I don't understand. There's an increase in, in funding, so but we're there not was, paying anything? No, it was a, um, a grant okay. that had... So there was money, there was an initial request, okay. and then they came back and asked for more money for... Um, more stuff. Was, yeah, was, stuff. There was a lot more paperwork than I think anyone, right. even though they knew the scope of it, I think it was much more than they had anticipated. But, but it's not costing the it's town. It's not costing the town, no. It's, it, but it's costing more of a... They hadn't spent, spent, they they hadn't spent, spent all of... The they, hadn't, oh, okay. they hadn't used all of the allotted funds so in the grant. They, now they did. And Amazing. that was always I, a concern. I'm shocked that they're using all the funds available. They still are not using all of the funds available. <laughs> that still does not use all of them, but um, it cleaned up the amount of work that went into phase one. Yeah, no, <clears throat> so um, that's okay. Sorry, the crumbling sorry. foundations, um, I'll note that most of you may be aware that Captive um, has begun to di distribute funds, and they're not. it's not as though anyone's getting a check in hand. They're then being authorized to begin the process of some money is beginning to flow mm -hmm. and uh, moving forward. So we're seeing even some in our community um, beginning to receive some of those funds. They can now begin the process of um, looking at contractors to begin to do the work. The assistant revenue collector position closes next week, so we will move forward with uh, hiring that. Transfer station, um, assistant transfer station operator position was, uh, that ended last week, so we'll begin um, the end of this week, the beginning of next week, with interviewing and hope to fill that shortly. Public Works, I am happy to announce that we have um, finalized our search and have made an offer to and accepted. Uh, Troy Spasato is the candidate that was chosen. The hiring committee, he's uh, currently Public Works Department in Killingly, and so he'll be coming to us from there. Um, he begins March 18th with us, so um, I, I look forward to him. I, I want to thank those that were on the committee. Liza and John um, were to be on the committee. Liza's work commitments took her other ways. The, the snow deterred John <laughs> um, so that he couldn't get here. We moved forward with the, the search at John's um, urging. And so, um, I want to thank those that came out, uh, Rick Zulik from Stafford, Carl, um, some old vet car engineer, out, um, Phil Stevens, and then Lou uh, Motion Bissette were on that committee. So um, I look forward to what we hope will be a long successful career with the title of the Lieutenant Patrol. Seventy-three thousand. Same as before. Um, no, but uh, the fi Derek's final salary was seventy-six and some change. Okay. Is this a lateral transfer for him? Is he was he a supervisor before? Or now he is. He, yes. At so he was assistant highway operations oh, okay. there, um, a much larger crew of mm -hmm. the assistant. So um, that's very nice. He's, he's going from a large crew to a small crew, which I think we'll know. We, we all know has its challenges going in both directions. So. I look forward to that. All right, new business. So the first item is uh, for discussion. So uh, you have, it's on performance evaluation. So per the um, personnel policy, we are to perform, perform evaluations. They are kept in their personal file. They are to be done annually. There's nothing in place. Currently, this board is the uh, body that would determine the, the uh, evaluate. I'm sorry, to determine the process that we use. So I've given to you two examples. If you want to take a look at them, and then we can um, 
we can discuss now. We can, if you want to share some things, get back to you. The second one is it's not teacher. It, um, evaluations are non-certified staff, so just another item. A lot of the items in the first one had been worked on by uh, Christina prior to me, so I found the information. It just it has not been used, so we are not currently, we're not doing it. We don't have any evaluations on hand. So I think it's important that we begin to look at this process. When you say there aren't any on hand, does that mean uh, there I mean, haven't been any I do not believe. In, in I, I do not that? believe there are because there's nothing. So according to the policy, they would be kept in their personnel files, mm -hmm. and there's nothing in any that I can find. Okay. So I do not believe they've been done, and when I serve as staff, I believe that is correct, that there have been none. Um, if I would say in her time, there's been no formal evaluation done. So, <laughs> which, um, yeah. So I think it's a process we need to begin. So I provided you with the um, language from the personnel policy as well as two examples. And those are merely two. But a lot of work had been done taking information before we were a board. Um, I don't know if the entire board before John worked towards that, if there was discussion. Um, but this is what I've been able to honor. Have you had this discussion before? You were no, we, we were never. We had talked about it. We never really were. Uh, were into it, and uh, Christina was going to work on it, and see what she could come up with, and okay. it kind of faded away into the sunset. I think that's what has happened. You'll, you'll, in you'll, past. Yeah, you'll, you'll notice according to the uh, personnel policy, we're not required to have them. We're at the uh, you know, there's Is lots of language that talks about when they're done, that they should be done. Yeah, but the, um, their, all employees are subject to performance evaluations by the department head as requested by the first selectman. So if the first selectman doesn't request it, then... And, and I, and to me, I wouldn't request on an individual basis. It would have to be as a whole. Well, it's got to be either all, all or nothing. Thing. So um, something I think we should take a look at. So I will... Um, I think it's just a good organizational policy to have certain systems in place for both the benefit <coughs> of the organization and for the employee. Yes. Um, I think there needs to be records of when somebody is going above and beyond so that when an individual is requesting a promotion or a new job or, you know, that there's some concrete paperwork to look back upon. Mm -hmm. And I think the reverse is true. If there's an employee that there's a challenge with um, getting their tasks met, there needs to be, again, some documentation for the benefit of the organization. And well, and without these to that effect, without a performance evaluation, um, we find ourselves in a difficult situation if we had to make um, a decision mm -hmm. in um, a negative impact to someone because without an evaluation, they were given the opportunity to improve mm -hmm. and make the change. And I think you find that most findings would be in favor of the employee without that. So just knowing it or keeping track of it or keeping notes by, of a supervisor, not that I'm saying those things are done, but those are things that wouldn't get us very far without actual communication. So. Keeping in mind, too, that uh, somebody's going to have to keep a very uh, strong hand on it because most of your performance Evaluations you're going to perform, uh, evaluate these two people who are working for you. Uh, what are you going to say? You did a lousy job. Well, now you got an enemy on there. And then they're going to go to the, the union and grieve to the union. It's, it's not just a simple matter. It is matter. not, but if we, if we have it, let's say you have, uh, let's say, a negative issue with someone yeah. and not getting their test done, and, and a, a union issue comes up. We have no documentation as to what their performance is one way or the other. So it's very difficult to find in favor of, of the employer at that point because we have no knowledge of this has been an ongoing action. We've given them an opportunity to correct the mistake made. Um, and, and again, I think it's just as important to let someone know when you believe they're doing a good job. So. And I think it also comes back to a larger question that we've talked about in various formats in this meeting, um, in other conversations, in other sessions. Um, 
that I think, I think for a while, Willington has kind of, as an organization, as a town structure, we've kind of been pretty loose about our, our structures in terms of um, as an employer. And um, I don't think that's always to our benefit. In fact, I think that's to our detriment more so by being so kind of individual and footloose and kind of, and I think we need to establish a little bit more procedure and consistency when it comes to um, being an employer and um, having certain very standard practices in place that any good organization would implement. Our, I know that every time we've had a hire, there's been conversations about what does the hiring list say? Well, we need to, it should be standard, right? Like, Correct. At this point, like, everything should be standard communication that's approved, that's, that's solid, that's built on a really good foundation of proper employment law and fairness. And without that, we just kind of fly by the seat of our pants and it's not going to be, and going back to the question and the, you know, the point of for consistency, it's not going to be consistent. And I think we need to look at that in terms of all of the paperwork that we do on a regular basis, as well as some of the sort of typical employment, um, professional development and training internally, supervisory training, and we talked about this in another forum, and John and I disagreed a little bit on the benefit of supervisory training, but I think you know there's, there's a need for some of that for, for the town and for the employees. And I think we need to kind of look at this as a big, big picture package of, of what we need to be a really well-functioning organization. So then, you don't have any type of SOP, standard operating procedures, anything as far as evaluations and disciplinary actions, step one, two, three, like warning, warning, discharge, there's nothing like that in the town? There so are steps, but without, in lieu of a, a performance evaluation, it can be difficult to follow, to, once you get into those steps, you have no baseline whatsoever. So, and this would a lot for within yeah, an annual review as well as um, in the probationary period for all employees. And I think it's it could be an important standard that um, that, that goes beyond this board. This board could have a, a different makeup potentially every two years. And it's something that keeps the practices standard within the employer despite who, um, who the board of selectmen is made up of. Well, I, I will bring up that I was once a member of an organization which was much larger than this, oh, which, had, you know, which had performance evaluations, and you could be, there were maybe a couple of dozen categories where you were either excellent, above average, average, below average, or un, unsatisfactory. And it very quickly turned into, if you ever had one category anywhere where you were above average, you were out. Because everybody was excellent in every category. And so when you went to do your evaluations, when you were doing the evaluation on the people that worked for you, you had to keep in mind that you, you did not do an honest evaluation because if you did, you destroyed his career. And I just want to bring that up here. It's not maybe quite the same, but you still got a lot of the same pressures involved. Well, anything done badly is going to be ineffective. And so I think building a structure that is supported and like an honest and a good, like I haven't had time to look through all of this stuff yet, but a form that kind of talks about some of these strengths and areas for growth, you don't. Nobody says an employee evaluation has to say they're outstanding or give them a grade. But you can talk about somebody's strengths and where somebody needs to develop and put in a plan in place, put a plan in place to develop the areas where somebody needs to gain more skill set. Like that's that's basically what a performance evaluation should do. And so if we're doing that well and we establish a good process, then it will work well. If we don't do that well, nothing we do, if we do it badly, is going to be successful. I've, I've been in like nine or ten organizations with these things, and, and you're right, Liza, you need that 
written paragraph. The problem there is you have a paragraph that says, where, what, what are this employee's weaknesses and where can he improve? That quickly falls into John's category where you say, this, this employee needs to be less perfect. Uh, their perfection is slowing up their job performance and whatever, and, and, and it starts getting blown out that way too. So you have to, you have to develop a, a, a culture where the honesty of the, of the job performance doesn't destroy careers. And, and that's, and that's, that's a very, very tough thing. And you, the town probably has a small enough organization where you may be able to get ahead of that. But if you get a, a culture that, where it's gone downhill, you will never recover it, and it would probably be better to get rid of the evaluations again. Well, that's sort that's of what I'm thing. saying, is that right. we have a bigger conversation to have, in that we need to look, Much at, bigger conversation, yes. look at the town of Willington as an employer as a whole, mm -hmm. rather than just talking about an evaluation, but look at how are we supporting supervisors? How are we supporting employees? How are we being consistent with our policies? We have staff who are union, staff who are not union. Mm -hmm. How are we still making sure that we're fair and consistent in our decision-making process regardless of whether or not you're in a union? That's exactly what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's that I think the conversation should be. Rather than choosing a, per a performance appraisal document, look at the bigger picture of how are we as an employer and how can we make sure that we're putting in place practices that are going to support employees in their excellence and in their development. So, and I think sometimes we step away from the fact that we are an employer. We get, we can easily get sidetracked with the issues of the town and our budgetary um, constraints and working on those things. And at the same time, we are an employer and we employ a staff that I think it's vital to to our community and getting us to the end result of all of those things, and we need to we need to cultivate an environment that we want them to be in, um, and I think it's important to to have discussions on both positives and I won't say negatives, but areas that need improvement on people. We all need that. I don't think anyone could benefit from an, uh, an evaluation that says you're great, you're great, you're great, you're great. We all have something to learn all the time. So I just want us to start the conversation. What everybody said in here is factual. Okay. It's where I came from. I was two or three big companies. I was involved in labor relations. I was involved in supervision. I was also attended courts at Weathersfield at the labor department. There needs to be a paper trail if you guys ever have a problem. You know, where I came from, there were 800 employees. And I was a chief steward, I was on the executive board, and then I went to supervision. You guys wear many coats. And it, it is a paper trail, as everyone said. You have to lay it out. You can hurt somebody by a bad review. But when you do write, I used to write them. I used to write over 120 a, a year. You write them where you start off, where it's, where you show them where they're doing, what they're doing wrong, or trying to help them, encourage them, and coach them. And then on the end, you end it in a good note to let's keep up the good work, pushing forward. The lack of that could hurt the employer in, in the worst case scenario. So, and we don't want that. We, we want we want everybody to be able to yeah. perform well. And that's the idea of that is to get to get everybody to a place where um, you're not necessarily here, but you're not done here today. So, we're just starting the discussion. All right, so. The next item is to for us to approve a CIP plan. So, last night CIP met. Can't even remember how many times. Maybe the sixth time. <laughs> um, what the only thing you're looking at the entire five-year plan. The only thing that had been voted and approved is year one. It says the 19, 2019-2020 uh, year. We're still meeting to finish years uh, two through five, and we are meeting next. Wednesday to do so. Year one, downstairs. Year one um, has direct impact on our budget, which we would need to then, if we're ready to tonight, if we need, or, or not, we'd have to have a special meeting so we can get it prepared for us to go forward to um, Board of Finance with it. So what you can see in year one are um, the top portion, our items, um, the first lines three through 
I brought my ruler here for a reason, <laughs> lines um, 3 through 15 are items that have um, a, a payment, lease payment, and or bond payment. And you'll see those um, in, in the new, the, they may be attached to new projects. If it was a new project for this year, they may be attached to old projects. You'll see line three is the bond for the library. That bond began in 2006 and it runs through 2027. So you can see the payment due this year is under 95000 So um, the new items on that list are the lease payment in line 15 for the roadside mower which is a public works request, so you can see that down below, line 53. So there are several projects that have been approved. CIP is um, an advisory committee to the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. So based on that work done there, the advice is they've done this plan, and this is what they would advise the Board of Selectmen that approve. So there was discussion, two, the two big ticket items you'll see down at lines 34 and 36 are the roofs at Hall and Center School that both need replacement. So we went from, and if you've been following minutes, we went from talking about bonding those two items. Um, the last suggestion made at our meeting last night was that they come from the fund balance. Um, the thought was then we would expend the money and get the reimbursement back. We did get a uh, response. So Peter is on CIP as well as Board of Finance. Um, Phil did get the answer as to reimbursement, and they both come back and lump sum. Okay. As, the, yes. as the payments are made, they're come back. If we bonded, the question was, would we get would we get it back in pieces as we pay bond payment? Would then we get a proportionate amount of the reimbursement? And the answer that we'll receive today um, was not that. It said that as the submissions were made, um, in the turnaround time, it made it sound negative, but it was pretty impressive to me, <laughs> but the turnaround time on reimbursements. So um, we'd be looking, if we were to bond, which was the first discussion we had had, we'd be looking at um, just over a million dollar bond. And then we're looking at four, five, six, almost 700,000 coming back to us. So if we did it the other way, do you see? Um, and, and one of the uh, invest and then a reimbursement. The ideas of coming out of the general fund instead of bonding, which sounds a little more hairy, mm -hmm. is that we would save considerably on interest and uh, and, and, and bond notes and all kinds of stuff. We, we it was a significant percentage that we would save by doing it that way and with the reimbursement we, we'd be uh, much better off if, if it came back in a lump sum which I guess they said that it, it, it has. Excuse me, yeah, it, um, I apologize, I just wanted to defer to this email. By the time they get through the whole process they'd be looking It would also save us a year I believe. Um, he said the process is extremely efficient can be distributed once the town submits receipts. He's estimated that it's taking approximately 45 days to receive reimbursements and not more than three months. Um, this is true whether the town has a bond or not. So when receipts are submitted for reimbursement, they will be reviewed and once approved, money will start. What money will be sent to the town? So that was our question initially when we went from bond discussion to this way. Would we? Would they hold back those reimbursements? to equal out the bond payments, and that was not the case. It at least does not appear to be the case. So that would be um, replacing both roofs. There's the new roadside mower. Um, there's work done that, to replace the fuel tank at Public Works that has to be replaced in uh, 2020. This allotted for security system, monitoring system at both hall and center that has reimbursements um, with it. It's right at the top, a new phone system for both the schools and the town office building, which has been much needed for several years now. Um, and that goes into the security um, issues for the school, too, being able to see where those phone calls are coming from. I know it's hard to believe in 2019, we do not have a car ID in the We do not know where our phone calls are coming from. Yeah. 
so let's please. You can call in crank calls too. That's it. I know, I wish I'd done that sooner. <laughs> no, to sell. Um, this, uh, we discussed um, the need for beginning the evaluation process on um, municipal structures that could be affected by crumbling foundations. So um, the suggestion was the request had been put in for 30 30,000 in year one, 15 and 15. Mm -hmm. they, um, the, the new change from CIP was 15,000 in year one, 30 in year two, and uh, 15 in year three. Again, the only thing that we're looking to approve now is year one. Mm -hmm. The outline year CIP has not completed yet, but that's the recommendation. So 15,000 instead of 30 in the first year. And the reason being was, um, you know, we thought we would not need to jump right into any kind of physical testing, but start with a visual test, mm -hmm. and the cost of that could be less. But at least we're beginning the conversation. Um, this also gave $30,000 for open space preservation, which has been asked for um, for many years and not been able to do. $15,000 to replace Bunker Care at Willington Hill, and $45,000 to light the basketball courts at River Road. Can I speak to two of those? Yes, you may. Uh, the the uh, $30,000 for open space is not to buy open space. Uh, they, the uh, open space people have been coming and asking us for $100,000 a year to hold an account so they could buy open space if they should, should come upon it. And we said, why don't you come, talk, come to us when you come upon it? However, when open space comes up, they need to move quickly to get evaluations and legal paperwork and that kind of thing done. And they estimated that at $60,000, and they currently have 30 in their account. So we said, we'll give you 30 so that you can move if you have to move. And uh, they actually had a plan for their 30 instead of just saying, right. give us 100,000, we'll spend it. Because their actual request so we'll to CIP was still 10,000 every year for the next 10 years so we get to that 100,000. Um, yeah. I think CIP found what well, no, they wanted they agreed was when they've been coming to us, they've been asking us for a hundred thousand dollars a year that is every correct. year for ten but years. This current request this year's current request is, is stated ten thousand dollars a yeah. year for ten years. Three years. No oh, six years. No. They wanted six the, the letter years. said no. The oh, letter okay. said ten. So that thirty is a compromise to compromise. Right. what CIP felt would get them to what they believe they needed, but the, the actual request was for ten. Um, but it's more, the 30 is more than the zero that um, they've been a, we've been able to fit into a plan in, in the past. So um, we found we found kind of a huh? I can't remember what the other one I want. Um, did you want to basketball? No. Nope. Concrete. Uh, Schools. What was it? The uh, roofs. No. Nope. The, the security you? monitoring. The roadside mower. The fuel tank. The fiber optic cable. Fiber optic, that was the no-brainer because I think that if we yes. put the outlier on that, that we, we will make our money back, I think, in the first year. In the first year. There's money being spent, so we buy really, our, really. we have our own fiber optic cable. Right. So instead of paying $1,000 a month, we would pay about a tenth of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so that was $10,000. And then there was a project for um, Exhaust in the upper wing at Center School. Pickleball court. So pickleball, pickleball, court. pickleball currently is pushed out at least a year two yeah, currently. So, yeah, so, so that's for a year. and that would replace that request is to replace the current um, volleyball court, sand volleyball court um, that I've seen occasionally. I don't think it's used quite like people had imagined in the beginning, but it is an amazing <laughs> sandbox. So maybe we could find, you know, have a fundraiser and, you know, like a scavenger hunt fundraiser to see what's in there. <laughs> so it is utilized, but not in the manner in which it was <laughs> hoped to be. And so there has been an onslaught of um, this surgeons of pickleball um, about town, and um, we don't have many indoor spaces available. As you know, we're limited in that, and so that's Maureen's request is that they revitalize the that area. I, I think. There may be some children who go to play during the day that might be sad their sandbox is gone, but I think it would be better use. But it wasn't able to be in year one, so it's a little bit out in year two. So maybe. And I think her hope was that there could be lighting on 
the pickleball court and the place week. Um, but so far those have made it into year one. So that um, you can see on, you should each have a packet with their budget and numbers. Okay. In the bottom portion, it's built into the top. And in the bottom portion, you'll see the items that specifically um, hit CIP. So it's a 1.2% increase. That includes the transfer of $30,000 to open space, money in capital reserve, money for debt repayment, um, the debt repayment for the public works leases, and then capital expenditures. <coughs> Part of our responsibility for our budget going forward is to approve a plan um, to go to board finance. Again, we're looking at just year one, the entire plan is not yet been finalized. But the other numbers do not affect our current budget going forward to board finance. So I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. To approve um, the year one of the CIP plan was presented. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? So we need a the dollar amount. Dollar amount. Um, five hundred for five. This is the last fifty. For five fifty, five hundred one. Discussion? This is pretty much worked out. Uh, 550 has been about the number that we've stuck with. Well, I, I don't have any serious problems with anything. We, we had some good discussion last night as to year. where the 550 came from. Yeah. And that that number seemed to, at the time, track the grand list. Um, and it went down and it fluctuated as those things went down. It seems to stay steady and especially as the Board of Finance asks us to come in um, at zero or flat mm -hmm. so that we not increase. So we work both last year and this year and we the past several years to stay within that range mm -hmm. and try not to go over it. Like I think there are lots of worthy projects. It's whether or not we can afford to do them all and we can afford to do them is the problem. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's, it's hard when there's half a million dollars worth of money and three and a half million dollars worth of project. That is correct. We did, we ended at 550, 501, but we began multi-point in almost every year. So it, it, there's a lot of moving pieces, and if you haven't, um, if you haven't participated or um, sat through some CIP meetings, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I was on CIP a few years ago. Yeah. And <laughs> it's funny because there are some things that were, that, keep, that are still that there. That keep getting yeah. pushed. There are a couple of things that have been there. Um, yeah. Year five. A couple of decades. Yeah, they continue they need to get done and we need five to projects. find a year. Uh, we need to find a way to get to them. And we had that, we had yeah. a real uh, solid fire. discussion about that this year. All right, so we have had many budget meetings. Last week uh, at our last regular, um, our last special budget meeting, the request Donna brought forth, was it, or Donna presented us with, was at 2.2%. Now you'll see it's a 1.6% increase. Um, there's some changes um, that happen. It's, it's a, right now, a constant fluid document. So I'll just kind of go through and tell you that it's a 1.6% increase. That's an increase of $55,522 um, and a total proposed budget of $3,459,021. And some of the big assumptions from that is that our medical insurance, um, we're anticipating a 14.5% increase, a 3% increase in the KERMA um, liability premium, uh, our KERMA workers' comp premium is also up 3%. We're seeing an increase in heating and diesel fuel, 
to $229 a gallon in heating fuel and $230 a gallon in diesel fuel. Those are both up from $2.07 a gallon in this budget. So those, um, you see those increases. Um, our contract expired with direct energy for our kilowatts per hour. So now our new contract with Constellation is a three-year contract from December of 18 to December of 2021. And that increases from 0 0.0795 to 0 0.0898. So that's another increase. Um, we must keep the lights on. <laughs> so the heat on, the lights on. Um, so the other assumptions in this budget, um, you'll note that the request was to add um, the assistant transfer station operator eight hours a week so that on Wednesday there was now two there were now two people, not three, so that's an additional eight thousand twenty two dollars um, in salary, plus it um, changed the benefits portion. The public works administrative assistant was reduced to step one based on our um, feedback from residents and our uh, continuous request, we put in $10,000 and a line on a new line item we refer to as tra traffic control to try to mitigate some of the speeding concerns around the entire town, not just in one uh, localized area. And that um, based on some of the quotes we had for speed bumps, if we were to go in that direction, or the speed monitoring signs, it could be um, on street signs, and then with the quotes we got from them, we did $10,000 was um, an adequate figure, a good start. A good start. Um, there is an increase to the senior center budget, the public works budget, and the town office building budget to allow for maintenance contracts with MCOR, $2,016 at the senior center, a $330 um, increase at public works, and a $2,000. Uh, $424 increase here, and that would provide a semi-annual um, contracting with MCOR for um, all of our mechanical services here. So things that have not, that, that really at this point have no maintenance on them, if we've been in the when they break, we fix them as we go, we really have no predictor as to where they're at now and the life of uh, their life expectancy doesn't help us plan in CIP for some of those major purchases and this will um, help allow us to do that. We have a current unemployment claim that um, we have appealed and we're not through that process so we believe if um, if we have to pay it out we could would, half would be in this fiscal year half would be in the next so um, we've added eight thousand dollars unemployment for next year and the first half could be paid out of this fiscal year. Um, the prepaid camera that came um, out of the 1819 budget it was originally moved from CIP to the 1920 budget, and the assessor was actually able to do it out of his current budget. So it came off of here altogether. And then lastly, you'll see that the um, hours were dropped for the in the revenue collector office and increased in the public. Uh, public works. The parks and rec department, only one of those affects our budget. But I think it's important to know that that where those 22 hours come from for sake of conversation. And the insurance line item, there was a change in that, um, which helps get us from the 2.2 to 1.6, and that was an assessment change with different people. So now that we've hired a public works director, the assumption we made um, is actually less than the assumption. Uh, is more, what the assumption we made was more than what the actual will be, so we're able to change that. So I know the request was to, to stay flat. The only um, we have proposed about about twenty five hundred, roughly twenty five hundred dollars in items that were not in the contract from last year. If we not including the unemployment. Um, and that being the tra line item for tra traffic control, the additional eight hours for the assistant transfer operator and the M core contracts. So 25,000. 25,000, sorry. Yeah. I say 2,500. Um, so of that 55, 522 that we are over from our request from last year, 20, about 25. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little bit more than half of that is new. Um, and I would even argue that 1.6 is um, less than what would be if we had stayed flat with everything that we did in this current year um, and just added for the increases. Mm -hmm. Any increases in our insurance, our current insurance, our heating fuel, our electricity, and um, the 2% contractual increases, I believe would have taken us all of those. So we are at the point where we can approve, or if we think we need to go back and do more work on it, then we need to go back and do more work before we send it to board of office. That's um, the discussion we had at our February 11th was that we thought we had talked through all we had, and we um, are now today presented with a little bit lesser <laughs> a budget than we had started with um, last week. I want to edit my line of going to go with traffic control. Did we have 10,000 all the way? We had, yes. Um, okay. 2,000 or something. Yeah, 2,000. So the um, quote provided to us for the traffic cameras. Hi. My name is Zoe. Downstairs. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so um, just one quote that we had received for um, the traffic, the radar, radar speed signs was, again, it was just one quote, was two of them um, at about $5,500. But and that, that was for two. If we went any further than that, um, besides, that's just those two items was one way to look, so it's a place to start. Um, I think we react, we, we put in what we felt was what was needed based on hearing repeated concerns of residents. And again, I say that what we looked at is not just one street and one portion of town, it's the entire town. Um, and one, once again, I do want to put in that I think we, uh, well, I guess we, I do see the need to add the uh, assistance um, uh, transfer, station. transfer station operator on Wednesdays. And that was, for years, there were two people yeah. on Wednesdays. It's not new, I think, with some budget, um, some budgetary constraints, it was, it, there was a reduction made. It's not good having one it's person not. there. For safety purposes, I, I think. Well, that's my, my main concern yeah. is the safety purposes. And we've heard that from residents as well as. Um, but again, I think uh, I think we are misdirecting, uh, not increasing uh, what we're spending for what has now been one person, what has now been the uh, assistant revenue collector. We're going to cut the hours there. I'm not saying we should cut the spending, I just think that we are misdirecting where we should be putting that spending. Uh, when money is tight, again, well, I think we're already spending uh, enough on park and recs that we could find better places, better use for the hours of that individual. But I think. Uh, I've been out, out argued on that. So. I, I, again, I think my argument was that there was, um, that's where the need is, and there's still a need in this town, and we are, we are definitely have a different opinion of um, fulfilling that need, where there's work to be done. So um, we have a, a lack of, in, in one area, and an uptick in another area. So I think we both agree that when there's work that needs to be done, we just disagree with the department in which it needs to be done. <laughs> so it doesn't, while our, our differences, and I respect those, um, of that, your feelings on that department, there's still an incredible amount of work that goes along with providing that service um, that does hit not just children, I will say. A lot of times some of those programs get talked about in terms of kids and who they benefit, and they benefit um, Parks and Rec is not just 
a department that benefits our youth, it benefits all residents of Wellington. So, it, it is, at, at this point, the way it is, um, the way we found the, the cut and the increase, it's cost, it, it's cost neutral. Well, um, right. yeah, I, I understand that. The, the, the difficult yeah. portion is, ha uh, a portion of it affects um, a budget that we have a direct say in, mm -hmm. and then the other portion is a, a one that we do not, the part from rec, we do not, say it was a decrease, the way it's set is a decrease to the selector's budget, not the overall town budget, a decrease well, to the selector's yeah. budget, an increase to another, it's, so it's, we really only have control over the money. The come, money comes out of the taxpayer's that pocket, correct. so it doesn't matter. That is correct. That, does, that issue doesn't matter. But we're not approving the increase to the parks and rec, we don't have that authority. So I just want, that mm -hmm. you said, we are seeing a decrease, yeah, well. but uh, and so I am certainly in support of and that will go to, um, to board, board of finance, finance. anyway. Correct. Okay. Correct. It's already been proposed to the board of finance. She yeah. went before them two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have more. See the February 11th meeting minute <laughs> to review everybody's argument and positioning on this issue. I think we had good discussion. <laughs> I think it was. I think we heard each other. Mm -hmm. and then we, well, we disagree, we respectfully disagree with each other. It's important to hear both sides of it. One of these days, one of us will say each other. Well, it could happen. Well, it could happen. You know, I, I didn't say which one. <laughs> I think I so. Will, I will hold eye on this just to, um, just to forward it to the, uh, and well, obviously I'm out voted anyway, but just to forward it to the uh, Board of Finance. I'm, I'm on record as well, how, what I feel about it. So I'm going to entertain a motion. Well, I'll make a motion to, oh, can I have some numbers again? You can put the roll. The roll laid out there for you. What do I have to say? Okay, so I'll make a motion to pass the Board of Selectmen budget for a total of $3,459,021, which represents Am I doing good? You are. So Which <laughs> represents a $55,522 um, increase and a 1.6% increase overall. I'll second. You're not going to get it in a second. Hey, you can get it in a board. I, I, I just wanted to look at it. He didn't get back and I'm like, well, you can't hear the inside thought. <laughs> <laughs> My voice <laughs> echoing in your brain. Make sure I said the right thing. Okay. Okay, so any discussion? <laughs> you already had that. <laughs> but this is your opportunity. I can't take away your opportunity to discuss. Our opportunity to discuss. All right, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the next item is uh, it's tax refund. So I'll, uh, I will move to issue a certificate of correction to Han. Long you. Long you. In the amount of four hundred seventy-six dollars forty-four and forty-four cents. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, good and welfare. Um, we uh, received a resignation from Becca Rupert as the account analyst. Um, she's leaving us as of March first. She's going to work for the state auditor's office. So our loss is certainly their gain. Um, we had her for just less than a year, and she um, she was a valuable asset to that department. So we wish her well um, in her newest endeavor. She's got a busy year. She recently got engaged, a new job, a new house, and is getting married. So good luck to, to Becca. We will miss her. So Robin has now Give me the January um, call <coughs> list from Troop C. In the month of January, there were 11 accidents, nine criminal investigations, zero burglaries, one larceny, and 345 non-reportable matters. In addition to that, the following motor vehicle enforcement included one DUI, 112 traffic citations, and 27 written warnings. Uh, this seems lower than normal. Um, so might be something to be said for the cold weather in January. <laughs> it kept people at home. 
keep the cops in the street. It kept people at home and the cops off of the streets. Can I ask you a question? About, is there any way, and this might be not at all something they could report to us easily, but is there any way for us to get like those numbers disaggregated for the highway versus local roads? I can ask. I would be curious about that. And I'm sure the majority of those traffic citations are on the highway. Are on the highway. Right. But I will, I will put in a request to Lieutenant Corey and see if they can provide us with um, a breakdown. That would be appreciated because I think that would be important for us to know, especially if we are yes. our budgets approved and we do move forward with mm -hmm. knowing where the traffic issues are happening. Yes, I agree. Would be very important. Um, I will mention uh, on, uh, as well under Good and Welcome, if you're interested in something else to finish the rest of your night, there's a meeting to help with Willington Day in the Selectman's Wing, and there's a planning and zoning meeting downstairs. So don't feel like you have to go home. <laughs> you can actually stay here. Um, we just won't have anything else for you. Um, I want to thank um, Donna um, and the Selectman for, and all of our department heads for all of the work they've done on a budget this year. Some of these requests came in um, well under budget um, and, and did their best to, to do what they could to help um, mitigate any increases. Um, Donna puts in a lot of hours between the Board of Ed and um, the town, and, and I want to make sure we thank her for that. Robin, too, has been here many extra meeting nights. And I know it's part of their job. Um, but it's nice to know that we have them to count on. And with that, I move to adjourn. Just in time to get upstairs. Mm -hmm. Okay.